Hey folks, I'm Pastor Eric Tritton from Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Hudson, Ohio, and this is A Weekly Word, and I'm glad you're with me. Uh, we are coming up on an American holiday that uh, is kind of a big deal around here. Um, we often just call it the 4th of July, uh, but its proper name is Independence Day. And it's a day that we celebrate the blessings that we have as we live in this country. And I, I think that we would be good and right to say that we are blessed to live here and to celebrate the, the freedoms that we have. Um, and I think particularly of the freedoms guaranteed in that First Amendment uh, to the, uh, the, the Bill of Rights there that says that we have the right to free speech and it protects us from the prohibition of exercising our faith and peaceable assembly. We're, we're guaranteed the ability to, to exercise our faith and to gather together peaceably. Um, and I think that these, these things are good and right to, to celebrate. And as we think about Independence Day, um, I think that for us as Christians, there is a message that's woven into this that Christians should be good citizens. Um, we are meant to be good citizens of the nations that we live in. Uh, I think of Israel in, in Babylon, and in Jeremiah 29, verse 7, God tells them to pursue the well-being of the city I have deported you to. <laughs> there they were, they were exiles there, and, and God says, you know, work for the well-being of, of your neighbors, work for the well-being of the country that you live in. First Timothy chapter 2, uh, Paul writes that he urges uh, prayers, petitions, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, particularly, he says, for kings and for those in authority, so that we may lead tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. And he even goes so far as to say that that prayer and, and that type of a life pleases God. And I always think it's interesting when you read the book of Acts, um, in the book of Acts, the Christians are always displayed as being good citizens coming into conflict with other citizens in the Roman Empire. But as Christians, we're not just citizens of the nation in which we live. Um, as Christians, we have a higher allegiance than the country that we live within, uh, an allegiance that goes beyond this temporary place within which we live. In a sense, we're kind of like people who have dual citizenship. Um, we, we're citizens of the kingdom of God, as well as whatever nation that we happen to live in. And as citizens of the kingdom of God, that's, that's not just a metaphor. The kingdom of God is God's reign. He's the king, and, and he is doing his proper work, saving sinners on account of Christ. So we are people who live as aliens and strangers in this world, as it says in 1 Peter chapter 2. And we don't align with the, the priorities and, and the, um, the, the, the philosophies of this world. And that is because we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God to proclaim His praises. And we are people... We're people who long for our eternal home, even as we live in this temporary one. And that eternal home is something that's been promised to us by Jesus. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And in Hebrews, it speaks of this, uh, this home that we have as a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. So that citizenship, as, as people who are redeemed in Christ, it, it sometimes creates a tension for us when we interact with the kingdoms of this world. And that, that includes as citizens of the United States. You know, God's people, uh, I, I think that sometimes we, we've suffered from uncritical thinking and bad theology uh, in this matter. You know, as American Christians, sometimes the message seems to be that the kingdom of God and America are the same thing. Um, and to hear some people talk about it, to be American is to be Christian. And that's not really true. 
there are aspects of our laws and, and of the ethos of our country that, that do match up with God's law. But you could really say that about most countries. And none of us align completely with, with what God calls us to be and who he calls us to be. And that's ultimately because we're, we're sinners. And, and we speak of ultimate things. Our ultimate purpose as Christians is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. And that is not our nation's or our government's job. Um, that's the privilege that Jesus has given to us as he works in us by his Holy Spirit. And we are the ones who have been given this, this great, great privilege and responsibility to proclaim the forgiveness of sins that comes through Jesus' death and resurrection. And I think, I think that we've had some confused goals uh, as, as Christians in our relationship with our government. Sometimes it seems that we think that the goal is to establish a government that will coerce behavior that aligns with God's word. You know, and I think that over the, the centuries, Christians have been too quick to turn there, as though by simply passing laws, we can make the, the nation a righteous nation. And if you think about it, that's actually a kind of idolatry. You know, it, it's, it's saying that our nation can make us righteous before God, that our laws can make us righteous before God. But the only way that we really truly become righteous before God is through Jesus' forgiveness and his, his salvation. And that's why we always have to have in mind uh, that our goal is to proclaim the message of Christ. Crucified, risen, coming again as the Savior who gives a totally different and much more excellent kind of righteousness to us. The church is ultimately bigger than America. But as American Christians, uh, we do get to have a voice in our government, and that is a blessing for us. And so it is good and it's right for us to, to strive for civil righteousness. And I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying. I'm not complaining about the United States. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be active. We should. Because ultimately, uh, you know, we're called to pursue the well-being of the city within which we live, like it says in Jeremiah. We want to do that here in the United States as well. And that ultimately is going to be expressed by, well, loving our neighbors. So we, we promote godly behavior. We speak out against injustice. We advocate for the poor and the disenfranchised and the vulnerable. All of those things are, are good and they are right things for us to be involved in. Um, a good friend of ours once said, uh, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Uh, you know, so we, we seek to live that kind of loving uh, life with our, our nation, with our neighbors, and the people that we come into contact with. But we don't want to lose sight of our mission in this as well. Because sometimes... There's a temptation to make Christianity just about how, how do you behave and how do you act around other people. But our calling is to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. We are here to be Jesus' witnesses, to tell people the good news, trusting in the Holy Spirit, that he will call, gather, enlighten, and keep people in the faith. Um, to go back to that passage I mentioned earlier in 1 Peter chapter 2, we are a chosen race, a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that we might declare the deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And, and that's, that's a big and important part of who we are as we live in this country. And we can't lose sight of that. God has blessed us to, to live in the United States. He's blessed our country. And I think that we do well to celebrate that and to be thankful for it. It's right to celebrate all, the, all that is good and, and all that is, is right about our nation. But let's not lose sight of the bigger eternal picture that we live within as Christians who live in America. 
And that is that God is still at work drawing people to himself. We are blessed to be part of that work as we share the good news. Uh, and we're blessed to be able to do that without fear, which is something that many of our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, they don't have that privilege. So it's good for us to celebrate as citizens of this nation for a time. <laughs> we're not going to live here forever. But we must remember our citizenship in heaven it is where we're going to live eternally. And then we strive to live as messengers of God's love and his forgiveness for the sake of Christ. So, happy Independence Day. Happy Fourth of July, however you say that. I hope you have a great time celebrating God's blessings and gifts to you. Um, and keep in mind that you have the opportunity to share good news of, a, of an even greater kingdom a kingdom that will last forever as we live in Christ's righteousness. God's blessings. Mm -hmm.